Hey guys, how's it going? Today we are going to be replacing the wheel bearings on a 2006 Honda Civic. The first thing I'm going to do is get this brake caliper out of the way. I'm going to hold these little metal tabs here with the 19 millimeter wrench and then remove the 12 millimeter bolts holding the caliper on. So I'm going to do that for both caliper mounting brackets. All right, let me get those out of the way. That's the last one. I'm gonna be using a magnetics parts tray down there to hold all the, the pieces. So at this point, the caliper should be able to wiggle off just like that. And what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be using a bungee cord to support the caliper out of the way so that I don't have any uh, stress on the hose or anything like that. So what I did was I just hung it up here from the spring using a bungee cord, uh, wrapped around it and hooked there in one of the uh, mounting bolt holes. At this point I'm going to be taking the caliper uh, or the uh, yeah the, the caliper mounting bracket off. Two bolts, 17 millimeter. Uh, it's kind of dark back there. I don't know if you can see it, but. Um, they're usually on there pretty hard. I think they're torqued to 80 foot-pounds. I'm going to be using a breaker bar and a 17 millimeter socket to, to break these loose. You're kind of in my way. Let's see if I can work around you. Um, yeah, you're kind of in my way. I'll start the other one. If you have air tools, this would be a good time to, uh, to break them out. I do, but I don't have a, a socket that's shallow enough to get in there with the impact gun, so I have to do it the old-fashioned way with a breaker bar. It's good. All right, let me get that out of the way. So basically, this whole job came about because my wife went to the dealership for uh, you know just basic service, and they said that the wheel bearings needed to be replaced right away um, along with the rotors. Now the rotors I know are, have a slight warp to them. They are, they vibrate slightly when you, you, you know, break. And um, yeah, I can see that. But they said the wheel bearings need to be replaced. They wanted, what is it? Something a little over $2,000 to do it. And uh, I was like, I I'm not sure about that. So, you know, I drove it and I didn't, you know, I didn't feel anything. I didn't hear any growling or any grinding or anything like that. So, um, you know, I was, I was uh, not sure about that. I've already done the other side and uh, the wheel bearing over there was fine. So let's see if this side is okay or not and whether the dealer was really telling the truth. At this point, there are two screws holding this rotor on and I very much doubt if you will be able to get them off, especially on a car this old. And um, there's a lot of salt in this area, so everything is rusted. So you want to use an impact screwdriver like that. Basically, when you strike it, it not only forces it in towards the screw, but also forces it to the left. So you can get the screw out without stripping it like that. Um, also, you could use a Shake and break. Shake and break was popularized by I think Musty One, and a lot of people have, um, you know, come up with their own uh, versions of it, made it, and in a rusty environment like this, you will probably find that you can't get the rotor off even after you do get the screws out. So I'll show you how to do that. So I went into my big bag of metric hardware. This all came out of uh, the insides of a Ford AOD transmission. Um, I don't know exactly what the size of these are. I'll try and look it up and put it in the description or as a, a text over. But anyway, there are two threaded holes in the rotor like that. And you can thread these bolts in like this, the proper size bolts and 
Uh, unfortunately, that did not pop like I was hoping, but uh, you can press the rotor off that way. Oh, what a mess. At this point, I want to work on loosening the axle nut. Um, the car is actually not fully off the ground, so the other tire is on the ground over there. And um, so that means that the transmission is going to keep this from moving. Um, if both wheels are off the ground, it's going to move, and you're going to probably want to have someone step on the brakes um, and taking this off or use, a, use an impact uh, wrench. But um, essentially, what, hap what they do is there's a little keyway in here, a notch. And if you can, yep, you can see that. And they kind of peen over this metal so that it doesn't spin out on you and um, you don't want to just turn this nut because that's going to destroy your axle. So we got to unbend that before we can take this off. And to do that you're going to want all sorts of different sizes of screwdriver and screwdriver and punch. So sometimes even an air hammer you know might be useful. So I have this kind of bit on it and I'll just stick it in there and kind of Kind of like that. And then I'll go back to a screwdriver. I'm definitely going to get a, you know, a new one of these. So I don't really care much that much if I destroy it. So I have a new one of these. Let me work on that for a while. I have it kind of, you know, <laughs> kind of chewed up and uh, it's generally away from the axle shaft so I'm going to try and crack this nut uh, loose and that's a 32 millimeter socket and let's see if it moves. <sighs> try pulling up on it. There we go. And yeah, it does spin. I do not have a 32 millimeter impact, so if I do it by hand, there we go. That's not too bad. At this point, your axle should be somewhat free in there, which uh, this one is. And that is exactly what we want. So now I'm going to switch my uh, efforts to the other side here and I'll show you what I'm doing. So over on the other side here, I am going to, so I'm going to actually be replacing the lower ball joint at the same time. So I'm going to take the entire spindle off and press the bearing out. That's my plan of attack. So I want to get the tie rod end out. I'm going to be working on that and you got to get the ABS sensor out. So that's a 10 millimeter bolt and it's just a kind of friction fit in there so once you get the bolt out you got to work it back and forth and pull it out um, sometimes it gets stuck in there um, but eventually you, you should be able to get it out so I spray that down let it work its way in while I um, work on that ABS sensor and also I am also going to spray these bolts down here. Oops, sorry, can't see that. These are the um, strut bolts, pinch bolts for the um, strut that holds the uh, spindle from the top. Spray those down and underneath of here, doubt you can see that, but there's some um, the ball joint bolts under there. There are three of them. I'm going to spray those down and let that work itself in. You guys are really in my way. Did you know that? So this tie rod end is held on. There's a cotter pin here that goes through the, the stud. That's part of the tie rod. So you gotta work that out first before you can get that bolt out. That nut, actually, sorry, that nut. Before you can get that out. 
So, cotter pin comes out like that. And I think that is a 17 millimeter. Let's see. Nope. Must be a 19. Yep, 19. You are definitely in my way, guys. There we go. So I back the nut out until it's just flush with the top there. And I'm going to give these some good whack. Again, you, are, you guys are really in my way. Maybe you should back up. There you go. Back up a bit. There you go. Pop that off. Good. So I broke the anti-lock brake sensor pickup here. It's plastic and it was just not having it. You know, it's just not putting up too much of a fight and is rusted in too badly. So the plastic broke, the wires are still good, but the sensor is done. So I am going to need a new sensor wire and sensor. And let me see if I can show you where that connects over here. So it comes up, comes up, goes around there and there's a plug up there, I think you can see it right there where it plugs in. I'm gonna have to replace, get a replacement one from Honda dealership or wherever parts department. So at this point, I'm just gonna cut the wire and um, I'll punch it out of the spindle once I have the spindle off the car and we'll go from there. At, at this point, I am going to um, release these strut, uh, these uh, strut, uh, Mounting bolts, that is reverse, okay. So it's a 17 on this side, on the uh, bolt side, and 19 on the nut side. So that's one. Put that here, and we got two. Got two, perfect. Now at this point, what I really want to do is I just want to get the axle out of the car. So, pull these out. Give it a little tap. There we go. All right, now, the, uh, and you know what? I think I'm gonna finish taking off this tie rod nut and get that out of the way as well, over there. All right, I got that tie rod out of the way. So this thing, and um, you see here I, oh, there you go at the top there. You can see I cut that ABS wire, that's out of the way. And so, you want to get this axle out of here. There we go. Try and get this out of the way. There, this thing definitely got like salt or something in it. It's definitely, uh, you know, maybe I'm gonna bungee cord that up, but yeah, that was uh, stuck in that, that spindle. Ah, I got that bungee corded up uh, with the brake caliper up there, kinda help it stay out of the way. Um, 
at this point, uh, what I'm, I need to do is I need to get the spindle out of here. See, I don't, I don't really hear anything. I don't think that these bearings really needed to be replaced. I'm not sure what the uh, Honda dealer was talking about. I don't know whether they just recommended at 100,000 miles, because that's about what this car is, or, or what? I don't know. But anyway, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get those, you can't really see it, this thing is in the way, but I'm going to get those bolts back into the uh, uh, top mount. I put those uh, two bolts back in and just snugged up the nuts ever so slightly. It's nearly impossible to press, if this spindle is off the car, it is nearly impossible to press this uh, hub off of the bearing. Really, uh, I mean, if you had exactly the right size bearing splitter, maybe, but you're going to be pressing it out crooked. At least that's what I've seen. Um, so the way that I have found is the, I don't know if you would call it easy, but the best way to do this is I'm going to use this hub puller with a slide hammer and a bit of authority and uh, just um, force it off. And the bearing is probably going to split in two. The inner race is going to come free of the balls and all of that. And um, you're going to have the inner race stuck to the spindle. So that's why you probably want to get a new spindle um, with this. I have a new spindle with the bearing. So that's on. And basically I just thread this uh, side hammer in there. And then uh, I'll reposition the camera and you can watch. We are all set up and basically you have to show this thing authority. Like as much authority as you have. And you probably want the area behind it clear in case it swings out and flies out, um, which does happen. Um, but yeah, essentially at this point, you just, um, you just go at it. All right, it's coming now, so I'm gonna go a little bit less, with a less authority so that this, hopefully I won't swing and smash all the stuff back there and break the pressure washer and... There we go. That is how you do it. And you can see the inner race came out with it. And there's no problem here. I really don't know what the Honda dealer was talking about saying that the wheels were going to fall off and need new bearings. This is fine. If you thought that was bad, well, <laughs> that, that was definitely not the worst part by far. I'm going to say that this retaining clip in here it is actually it is a snap ring internal snap ring and um, this one obviously was full of salt water from the winter and <laughs> I can tell you based on the other side that this is probably the hardest part of the entire job right here or one of the hardest parts so I'm gonna let that soak in I'll bring you back in a couple minutes and we're we're gonna go at that thing I have decent snap ring pliers. These are not the removable kind. They have fixed tips, but I promise you, I promise you, no matter how good your snap ring pliers are, if you go at this thing right now, you are going to break your snap ring pliers and you are going to be cursing and you, are, you will not be happy. Uh, this thing has been soaking for, you know, a few minutes, maybe five. And I think what we're going to do now is we're going to go for the old Heat and beat. So there is there is nothing in here that you can damage. The CV uh, joint is out of the way. The ABS sensor is in there, but it's already toasted. I already broke that. The bearing is fried. The tie rod is out of here. The ball joint we're replacing. So I really don't care. We're just going to heat this thing up. Hopefully the uh, 
Hopefully the uh, bearing uh, grease will not catch on fire. Uh, maybe I'm, I won't heat it up that much. All right, it's good and hot. It's not, it's not red hot, but um, yeah, it's hot enough. So now I'm gonna come around and I'm gonna use an air hammer. Whoa, ah, got hot balls everywhere. There's a joke in there somewhere. All right, so, got that heat, and we got that beat. I'm gonna do some tapping. I'm gonna take a uh, small punch. Whoa, don't fall off there. And take a small punch, put it kind of in the holes here. I got a smaller punch than that. Maybe that'll work. Small hammer and kind of see if I can get the the end, the ends to move so that if I can get the the ends free, I can, you know, it'll it'll kind of peel around and, and free itself. At least that's my hope. I think I need a smaller punch. Let me look for a smaller punch. Okay, so with a little more heating and a little more beating, I got it to the point where I'm able to get one side kind of free there. So you're on the wrong side here. Oh, let me see if I can. Get a screwdriver. Ah. So close. I think I did too good a job on the tangs up here. Let's see if a thinner screwdriver would get in there. There we go. There we go. Getting somewhere now. There we go. Come on. Come on. Don't spring and hit me in the face. That would be bad. Ah, oh, yeah, there we go. Check that out. Like I said, hardest part of the job right there. At this point, uh, since it's still on the car, it's a lot easier to get that castle nut off for the lower ball joint while it is on the car because, well, at least for this car, it's super rusty. Three, um, two nuts and one bolt under there holding this uh, lower ball joint and the spindle on. I'm going to take those off and I'll bring you back because um, you aren't going to be able to see anything. Well, I have everything loosened. I took the castle nut off down there. I took the three uh, lower ball joint mounting bolts, uh, bolt and nut off. And now I just finished removing these strut bolts and nuts that were on here. And at this point, this thing should be free to come off, which it is, so here you go, you can see you can see the lower ball joint down here much better now. There's two studs that stick through and a bolt that goes up, and here's where the uh, castle nut was, and here is the ball joint itself. It's not bad. Eh. So you know what? This one probably could stand to be replaced. Here is the ABS sensor that is broken. Uh, you see how I broke the plastic there? It did not want to come out. Here's the other end in here. So before we can press this bearing out, I gotta um, hammer this thing out of here somehow. Uh, let me see, what am I gonna do? Maybe one of these punches, straighten it out. There we go. 
Oof. That one's all screwed up. That's definitely not being reused. Let's see. There we go. Now it came out. That's a shame. It's all plastic, so it has a tendency to, whoops, to uh, break there because it's all rusted in. You know how rusty junk is. Well, I'm down here. Why don't I just beat on this uh, lower uh, ball joints and see if it'll come out. Mess that up too bad. Uh, let's see. There we go. Just like butter. We're going to be using this set on the press. It's an Astro Pneumatic 78825 Master Bearing uh, Remover and Installer Kit. And um, this is going to have all of the uh, sleeves and plates that we need to, to get that bearing in and out. Uh, the way we're going to get this bearing out is I'm going to use this sleeve from the, the kit. And that is going to go here on this arbor plate. And this is going to go down, face down, on that sleeve. And as I push the bearing out, I am going to... I'm going to use this plate here, in there, push the bearing out, and it's going to go into the sleeve. You want to have this thing centered as much as possible on, in the sleeve so you're pushing it out straight so that, you know, everything is perpendicular. And um, here we go. Let's see how many pumps it will take for this thing to pop. There we go. If it gets hung up on the sleeve, it's going to stop and you don't want to force it if that's the case. You want to reposition, but it doesn't seem like this one is getting hung up on the sleeve. It, I guess it's, it's all sitting pretty good. Okay, let's see what we got. And we have a bearing. Good. That's pretty good. I'm gonna wipe that out with some uh, WD-40 or something, then grease it and we'll press the bearing in. The way this is gonna work is that I have the uh, spindle or spindle assembly here. I have a sleeve here. That That is the exact size of this lip in here. So it will be resting on that. like so. Center that in there. Good. And then I'm going to have the bearing. Here's the new bearing. And this is a Timken bearing. I like these bearings. Um, I use them on the, the Mustang. The mag there is a side that is ever so slightly magnetic. See, I can feel that. It's slightly magnetic for the anti-lock brake sensor, and that goes down. Once you have the bearing uh, greased up like I, I do, and um, somewhat seated, then I'm going to use this particular plate from the 
uh, bearing installer set and it is exactly or it is slightly less than the outer diameter of the bearing um, already tried it and so I am pushing on the outer race you never want to push a bearing by the balls <laughs> I think there's a joke in there somewhere but you will damage um, you'll pit or score the the balls if you do and you will ruin your bearing so you never want to do that okay we are there and you know I, I know it's hard to get all of this stuff exactly perfectly perpendicular um, I try as best I can so I'm gonna you know start pressing it in and see if it's pretty close like that it'll kind of right itself and there we go I think we're ever so slightly off center. I'm gonna bring it down a little bit more. And I'm going to now slightly adjust this. There we go. Because I don't want to bind up on the on the lip down here. Let's keep going. Close, let me adjust again. There we go, perfect. All right, I think that's probably good. Let's take a look. As you can see, um, the lip where the um, snap ring goes in is exposed now. So you can look at the other side and we can see that it has uh, bottomed out. So you take your new snap ring, it's a pretty heavy duty snap ring. You guys are in my way again. All right, let's use a punch and a light hammer to, there you go, seat that. Make sure that's all seated in there, which it is. Good. Look at that nice shiny new spindle. The way this is gonna work is that I have uh, one of those sleeves down here, and that sleeve is gonna go right over the uh, hub or spindle assembly like that, the hub actually. Right like that, see if I can get it center dish. Good. And I already have all of these greased up and the uh, hub gets pressed in from this way. So this is facing out. So I'm gonna seat that in there. Best I can, it doesn't wanna stay. And then I'm going to use, I'll show you. So then I'm going to use this plate from the bearing installer kit and it is going to sit right there. It is the exact size of the inner race because you, again, you never want to use the, um, the balls of the bearing to push on. I've made contact, so I'm going to gently press and see, there we go, it's going in now. Good. And you know, so when you're pressing, there's, it, you can tell that there's no pressure on the bearing, the balls itself, because I can still spin this freely. If you're doing it wrong, you probably would not be able to spin this because the balls would be, you know, the bearing would be all jammed up from all the, the pressure. So that's a good, good way to tell if you're doing it right or not. Okay, we have bottom out. 
I'd say we're complete here on the press and we can go back to the car now. While I was out to lunch, um, I got a new ABS uh, sensor cable. So I I'm going to go dig the old one out of there. You're not going to be able to see anything anyway. I'm going to dig that out and put the new one in. I have the new sensor cable in, the new sensor. I have the new lower ball joint here. This one is a 22 millimeter instead of a 19 and it's a nylock instead of a castle nut. I'm not sure how I feel about um, nylock versus castle nut. I'd almost prefer a, a uh, castle nut, but then again, I'm sure the nylock will be fine. It's not like I'm taking this thing on and off all that often, but just as a just as a precaution, I'm gonna put a dab of lock, blue Loctite on there. I like this Loctite gel. This is uh, pretty good stuff. It doesn't run everywhere. I got it on. It's not torqued. I'm going to torque it. To the, there's a range, a torque spec range. It's like 44 to 51. I'm going to torque it to 50 once it's on the car. Got me some grease. I'm just going to go around this. Actually, you probably can't see anything, can you? Not now. Because, you know, I, that was really hard to get out of there. It's pretty rusted, so don't like that. <laughs> I have made the decision that I'm going to bolt the ball joint, lower ball joint, uh, the two nuts and the bolt back in, snug that up, uh, just put the tie rod in and then torque this nylock down because because it's a nylock I do want to get the proper torque spec on it and if the axle is back in the car. I'm not going to be able to get a torque wrench on it, so I got to do it now. I have those three, um, those three, the two nuts and the bolt snugged up under there, not torqued yet. Got the tie rod on just loosely to, to help me hold it. I have um, my uh, 3 8 inch torque wrench with a uh, 22 inch deep socket on it. And I can get that in there. And just a combination of the tie rod and me holding it and brute strength, I'm just going to torque this thing to 50 foot pounds. Got it, 50. I'm um, going to get this axle, you see any of this? Yeah, you can. Back in here, get that in there. There we go. That in there. And now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to maneuver a little bit with my feet and my arms get this that started kind of hold this down and out with my feet So I can get the bolt in just like that. Easy. Just takes a little bit of uh, finagling. And uh, this one should go in pretty easily now that it's all lined up. Good. Get me a dab of Loctite right there. And another dab right there. I don't need too much. These are torqued. Uh, they're torqued pretty good. I think uh, 80 foot pounds. 
So spin these nuts on. At this point, I want to uh, torque the lower ball joint to control arm bolts nut. You start with the two nuts first and then you do the bolt. And the torque spec is 44 foot pounds. Just like that. Easy. I have a cheat sheet of uh, torque specs here. Okay, let's torque these uh, strut tower or strut spindles, pinch bolts, whatever you want to call them. 85 foot pounds. Good. Very good. I'm going to put this tie rod back in. Yes, I have a new tie rod and I will put that in after I drive it for a little while, but i um, not going to do it now because I've had enough. <laughs> this, is not, this is not the most difficult job in the world, but it's, it's not, uh, it's definitely not easy, I would say, you know. Um, I don't know. Not sure how I would rate this job. It's definitely definitely has a physical aspect to it. Um, you know, the slide hammer and and pulling that hub off and um, manhandling the spindle back on. That'll be good. Got the cotter pin here. I was actually able to reuse this rusted thing. What next? Um, wheel or axle nut, right? You want to see that. So this is a new axle nut. What is this 32 millimeter? 134 foot pounds. Okay. And of course, you don't want this thing coming out, so we are going to uh, dimple it, just like the old one. Excuse me, you're in the way. So right here where that uh, keyway is y you are in the way you're gonna have to move I'm trying to hit a round nut with a rounded punch I gotta get it started There we go. That's enough. It's definitely not coming out. You don't want to go too crazy because then you're not going to be able to get it off again if you need to. Hate that. Uh, what's next? Uh, rotors. Got brand new rotors here. Supposedly these things are supposed to be coated. We will see. You know, it doesn't really matter. In uh, this climate, coated, not coated, makes no difference. Rusts, amount of salt they put down, doesn't matter. Everything just turns into a pile of rust, rusted junk. All right. Get these screws back in, snug them down, okay, 
these. I got new pads too, so we don't need any of this stuff. We need that. Let's uh, get rid of these, these clips. Okay, strip down. Let me get the new stuff. That's the right size. All right, got one there. Let's find the other one that's the same thing. Maybe that. Yep, there we go. I am going to torque them to the proper spec, which is 80 foot pounds. Uh, brake pads might be nice, don't you think? Okay, we have brake pads. All right, let's get the caliper down from up there. At this point, uh, since these are new, uh, new rotor, new, uh, new pads specifically, you have to uh, compress the piston. And these are just, um, you press them in with a C-clamp. There's no, you don't turn them in there. They're not one of those, the rear is like that. Anyway, press this piston back in. It doesn't have to go too much. Okay, that ought to be enough. Uh, let's do away with that and see if this will go over now. Yep, that's, that's fine, good. At this point, as soon as I tighten up these caliper uh, mounting, or mounting uh, screws, I am done. Uh, except for putting the wheel back on. I am done, and I'd like to thank you for joining me on this little adventure. And I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I know it's a little bit different from the videos I've, uh, you know, I normally make, but um, I hope you found it interesting. And um, yeah, this is this is what I've been doing um, lately. I've been working a little bit more on cars than on like small engines. Um, cars have been what I started out working on, and it's what I like to work on. So yeah, uh, thanks for joining me. And if you like these videos, be sure to check out some of my other videos. You know, give a thumbs up, leave a comment. And I'll see you on the next one.